almost every day is when I walk on the streets. Children pointing finger at me, saying, See how you are walking. Walk very well. Adebolo, could you please narrate to us your academic journey and how you emerged as the overall best white result holder in Ajayi Crowder Secondary School? I started going to school at the age of four. But during that time, I was just going to school for going sick. I did not understand anything that they were teaching me. At the age of six, we left Lagos to Idigoku, where I had this neighbor. Every night, when he's back from work, he would beat me, teaching me things that I want. Anytime I did not get a particular word very well, he would beat me. It got to stay that I still run away from this man. Whenever I hear the owner of his car outside, I'll jump on the bed, pretending to be sleeping. By the time I came back to Lagos, all my friends were waiting for me, six or past five. So my school that I was going when I was in Lagos back then, they broke down. I had to find a new school. In the aspect of finding a new school, I went to a lot of places where I was torn down because of my disability. So I maybe neighbor just asked me to check in in a school nearby. And I went there and the man said, let's just give me a test for a time and see how I will cope. And by that, I was brought from Pami six back to Pami two, all because I could not write well. So from that Pami two, everybody in my house that they were in my age mate, they stopped talking to me. I was always indoor, reading on my own and trying to get the best I can on my own. I finished primary school and I was awarded as one of the courageous students of the school. I got into Morocco Comprehensive Junior High School. And while I was there, I decided that, okay, this is my time to turn the table around because yeah, I see people that are much older than me in the same class as I am. So I decided that, okay, it's a race, and it's time for me to run the race with them. I did everything I could, but I mostly stay in the library. So, because I learned that readers are readers. So, I, I graduated from Morocco Comprehensive Junior High School, but a teacher told me to take transfer due to relocation of houses, I took transfer to Ajay Kada and Moria Senior Grammar School by ground. The school was an only boys school, so I was like a stranger to everybody because I know not, I do not know anybody in the school. I said that, okay, since I'm here now, I want to be in science class because that's the class that can profit me and me making a vow to my grandmother to study in the medical field. So I told the principal, but they all turned me down, saying I can't stay in science class because of I do not have coordination. As time goes on, they took me to Modukwe Cole, where the counselors advised me that they should just test me. Just for a ten. I got into a Jakarta during the ninth week. Just three weeks to the exam. And I got the exam with 96 students in the class. I came out one of the top ten students of that school at that time. And decided that okay, since I could come out at that position, I just try me for the entire term and see how it goes. And with that I finished my school in, and just one particular day uh, my school told me that wife is in the corner so I should go and visit the wife office telling them about my writing situation because till now I can't write legibly 
and myself. So I was taken to Ayako to the wild coffees at Ikorodo, where they told me that a student, a junior student, can write for me, whereas I'll be saying the answer, why they have been doing me, saying the answer. And this went on during the period of my work till I got all my papers finished. Then this particular day, I was just on my bed, just sleeping. And I got a call from my school counselor telling me to come to school. I didn't know why. But when I got to school, I thought that they wanted to award me as the best student of 2021 as a student in WAEC. Uh, I felt really good because I have accomplished something that everyone does when I was in primary school. Those that left me behind could not accomplish. People mostly think that cerebral palsy is a disease. But actually, cerebral palsy is just like a disorder of the brain. Some people living with cerebral palsy are on wheelchair because different people have their own different definition for cerebral palsy. But for me, cerebral palsy is a limitation to my movements and a limitation to my coordinations because in my, my special ability, like I used to call it, limit me from writing. It also limits me from buttoning my clothes on my own. So most of the time when I have tried to do this, not that I can't do it, but it takes me more than hours to button just one. And this is a, can really get it limb. And my disability in terms of how people react to me. Because when I'm entering public transport, for example, some people tend to shift away from me. Some people tend to get off the bus because I, I just entered. And while I'm in school, some people will draw their words because they believe that I'm their classmate and stuff like that really affects me emotionally. But I try not to react to it. When I was much younger, my grandma called me one particular day asking me what will I become in the future. I told her a lot of different occupations when you come soldier engineering, there are lots of things. But she was like, can I go and study medicine, become a doctor? I was like, no, but why? You said she wanted me to become a doctor. Ever since then, that has been my aspiration, to be in the medical field, in order to make my grandmother proud of me. As I know does, when you know and you accept your problem, you have found the greatest solution to it. Because if you say that, okay, you have cerebral palsy and you lock yourself in, or you lock your world with cerebral palsy indoor, I tell you this today, tomorrow, that boy or that, or that girl you lock in door will become a liability to you. But if you leave them to allow them to grow wings and fly, Tomorrow, they will be the one helping and caring for you in order to repay you of all your, your work there. So, as a parent, if you have a child with cerebral palsy or any kind of disability, try and get to the talent of the child. Get to know what the child wants and try and encourage the child to socialize because when he socialize and people see him and they don't see his special ability in him but the same as an human being he will go miles more than you ever thought more than you ever think about and my advice to the government is that they should spread the news more give you out information and a lot of Healthcare facilities 
can be done to people with cerebral palsy in order to help them accomplish their full potential in life. One of the most important investments I ever had was when I was in GS1. That day we were having literally a debate section on the assembly. They just called us out and we were all outside. So they were like, we should go back to this class and bring out our chairs so we can just sit down on the assembly instead of standing. And I turned back saying that I should go and get my chair. Audio students just rush on me, stepping me on the floor. I, I actually had a taste of sand that day on my white screen before. I turned into brown. A lot of people stepped on my head that day. And another notable experience I had was on on the Palm Bridge on year 2020. I was climbing the bridge, my shoelace on loose. So while while I was trying to hook it up, someone pushed me. I was just lucky that I was near the gun and near something I could hold tight in order for me not to fall and eat my head. And the third one I, that I mostly experience almost every day is when I walk on the streets. Children pointing finger at me, saying, See how you are working. I work very well. I just smile. I have it. And I was like, mind that. Well, I do not understand. So, I should not get angry about it. Although, this kind of things, they mostly used to put me down. But I said that, well, they are children. I don't understand yet. So, so I forget about it. When I was much younger, before I used, before I started socializing with children of my age, there was this particular neighbor that I used to have, Bobo and Esther. When they said I'm inside the room, thinking, they would come and drag me from my room upstairs. We would play together and they really kind of build my confidence in talking. One of, in fact, the most pleasant experience I ever have is being a child with cerebral palsy because I'm very, very proud of my special ability. But when I think about me without it, I used to see myself instead of reading, playing football, or walking around the street with no aim. So this kind of thing, they won't put me in the position. I am mean, now due to my cerebral palsy. I met a lot of incredible, incredible people that are sponsoring me. People like Yanuwa Children Care Foundation. People like Anthony Kukwe. People like Manola City Foundation. And a lot more that are helping children with cerebral palsy. Through them, I've been able to meet the governor of Lagos State. I've been able to meet the only of the fair and a lot of remarkable people in Nigeria. So, me having my disability is the greatest joy that I can ever have. For now, since I'm not more in school, I use my Saturday to build videos telling the world on Instagram about people with cerebral palsy using myself as an example.